Guys, I'm not kidding. I just had an epiphany moment. I just had an aha moment about Bitcoin's long-term price. A lot of people say the Bitcoin ETF is changing everything. This time is different. We will see a super cycle and Bitcoin might go to a million dollars. And of course, I was very, very skeptical. But there is some data that might be changing my mind. I'm really on the fence here whether or not the mathematical models that we had in the past are going to break now with the introduction of the ETF. Let me show you why. First of all, we need to quantify the Bitcoin ETF demand. We need to see how much demand is there potentially pushing up the price. And then we have to estimate how much will that additional demand move the price. So this is a very nice Dune dashboard where we've got on-chain analytics of the balances of different ETF issuers. And so we can see Grayscale still has a market share of 55%, BlackRock has a market share of 21%, Fidelity of 13 etc. And here we can see the number of Bitcoin that is being held over time. So this is growing. The share of Grayscale, of course, is going down because they charge the highest fee and the share of the other ETFs is growing. Nothing surprising here and we can see a very clear upwards trend. We can also see how fast this is going up by looking at this chart. This is the net inflows measured in dollars. And there was just recently a new all-time high. So we did see net outflows for a few days at the end of January. That was because the grayscale outflows really accelerated and the adoption of the other ETFs wasn't yet fast enough. But since then, pretty much every day is an inflow day, net speaking. Now, how much inflow? Have a look at the following. Currently, roughly 4% of all of Bitcoin supply is in the hands of those instruments. And the demand in the last 14 days is equal to 6.52% annualized being scooped up in those ETFs. So if the demand stays at the current pace and it doesn't even grow further and it currently seems to be growing slightly, then one year from now, we will have more than 10% of Bitcoin supply in the ETFs. Now, does this mean that the price is expected to go up by 6.5%? No, it does not. There is a massive, massive leverage effect in the market cap of Bitcoin relative to its demand. In other words, you don't need a lot of Bitcoin to be moved in order to impact the price. The way to think about this is, for example, with property. Say you've got a road of 100 houses and say maybe a shop nearby just shut down and the families, some families are in trouble. Let's say every house is valued by a million dollars and now three or four families have to all sell their houses very quickly, way before below the typical million dollars, maybe just for $800,000, maybe for $700,000. What then happens is that all of the houses on this road also get compared to those recent transactions, right? The comparable are the recent transactions. And so the market cap of all of those hundred houses of a million dollars, right? The hundred million dollar market cap suddenly goes down to only 70 million dollar market cap just because a few houses were sold in this lower level. And Bitcoin works the same way because a lot of the demand is held by long-term holders and only very few coins move to those short-term holders in a bull run. And so let's quantify this actually. When the price goes up during a bull run, how much of the Bitcoin moves from the long-term holders' hands to the short-term holders' hands? Because the assumption here is that the people that buy those Bitcoin ETFs simply just allocate. They're not actively trading into Bitcoin. They're simply just diversifying their stock portfolio, etc. So if you believe that the Bitcoin that's been held by the ETFs is pretty much long-term multi-year holding and it's not riding those waves, then this 6.5% supply absorption, what price impact will it have? And so here is the massive eye-opener I had recently. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin HODL waves. So this is Bitcoin's long-term chart with various bear markets and bull markets. And over here at the bottom, we can select how long a Bitcoin had been held on average. In the early days, there was a lot of active Bitcoin speculation. We see here in purple, just a Bitcoin that moved in the last 24 hours. Now there's not so many Bitcoin anymore, right? People simply just hold Bitcoin over the long term. But let's add a few more waves. Let's look at the Bitcoin that haven't moved, say, for the last three months. We can see in this bull run, for example, the short term holding moved from, say, 40% all the way up to a bit under 60% or 20 percentage points. Let's take this away. Let's only go up to the six month. Now the delta is from say 30% to 50%. So again, 20 percentage points. That's roughly what happened when Bitcoin moved from $750 
all the way to $20,000. So the price more than 20x when only 20% of the supply was actually sold from the long-term holders to the short-term holders. You only needed 20% of the supply to move. You only needed 20 of those houses to be bought in this road in order for the price to go from a million dollars to $20 million, right? This is the equivalent. And so we can look at a very similar thing in the recent bull run. So the bull run started roughly at $10,000, right? This is when the long-term holders tended to sell and then it peaked at 50,000, 60,000, roughly over here. So a 5X and the delta in terms of percentage is maybe from let's say 28% or so. I don't know the exact number, it's not shown here. Let's say 28% to 38%. 10 percentage points. So a 10 percentage point different made a 5x. 20 percentage points go from the long-term holders to the short-term holders means more than a 20x. 10 percentage points means a roughly 5x. So this is how much impact this has. If this here stays stable at 6.5 percentage points, then maybe this alone could already cause say a 3x or so in the price. Now the question of course is how this number will develop, right? Because when the price goes up and it's simply just a net dollar amount that goes in and the price has already 3x and this percentage number will go down by two thirds so let's say the same dollars flow in bitcoin is at 150k then the number in green the 6.5 will only be 2.2 roughly there is of course also the halving event it will not have that much of an impact all right only 0.7 percent per annum the tf numbers are way more important now right roughly 10 times as important so is it all different this time? Potentially. The main thing really is whether or not those ETFs get continued adoption and if they grow at least as fast as the price. If they do, then the Bitcoin price can go up massively. Scooping up 6% of the supply every single year has a huge leverage effect on the price. Right with our back of the envelope calculations, it could be a doubling, it could be a tripling every single year. This looks pretty crazy. And of course, it's not sustainable forever. But that's a nice thing about the blockchain. We can continue looking at these numbers regularly. We can see every single day how much money is flowing in, how much money is flowing out. Is this accelerating? Is this slowing down? What is this specific number over here? And so I will keep monitoring this and I will keep you updated in case there is a big change. If you want to get those updates, of course, feel free to subscribe. I publish videos regularly. A like would be very much appreciated as well. It helps the channel grow. There's also a free Telegram. Link is down below.